Business uh, being seen, you know, in the broader markets in the uh, NBFC, uh, you know, HFC space as well. In today's chart of DHFL comes up for you on the screen. It was holding in the green. Now it's moved to the low point of the day. So let's get that one up for you. And just to take stock of, you know, what's going on on the index, just want to pull up a few options, uh, Surbi. The 10,700 call and the 10,600 call, they are two of the most active strikes uh, today. So between them, they've added nearly around 8.5 uh, lakh shares approximately. Pull up the 10,600 call as well. Tell you that the call writers, they're back in the game. They believe that they can defend uh, the, you know, the technical level. That's a 200 DMA. But also, you know, uh, it seems that the bulls, they mm. want to defend the 10,500 mark because the premium on the 10,600 put, mm. that was at around 80 rupees approximately. So they're writing that particular strike. They're expecting 10,520 mm. to hold out. And uh, I think these are, you know, this is the broad range. 10,510, 10,520. To uh, the 200 DMA, that comes at around 10,750. So that's a broad range you're getting into. Remember, it's going to be a nice long weekend. All of us can relax and rest. But, um, you know, long positions, uh, no one would really want to take uh, into a long weekend like that. Maybe, in fact, even short positions. So keep an eye on that front. For the time being, stocks coming up the high point of the day, DHFL. That's one stock we're looking at. But otherwise, plenty of stocks that are moving around. So let's talk about Tech Mahindra. That stock is trading higher. Most brokerages, they're positive. Uh, post a positive commentary that came in from the management. Nimesh is with us. He's going to run us through all those details. You know, most of the analysts came uh, positive, was the analyst meet. So the broad message from the management was pretty much in the lines of, uh, similar lines as to what they said last year as well. So each businesses will focus on the digital uh, piece as well. So that's going to be the key focus for, for, for Tech Mahindra. Uh, 5G telecom, uh, 5G will be a, a, a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a drive for the telecom vertical going forward, but that's not going to come so soon. So they, even, even management is not expecting any big revenue, uh, you know, bump for, for, for the telecom vertical from 5G in the near term. The focus of the management is going to continue on margins despite the, uh, the, the, the recent expansion. So they are very firm that the, that the margins will continue to be in the range what they have been reporting for the last many quarters. Uh, most of the brokerages have held on to their views. So Jeffries has maintained a buy, uh, maintained a hold with a target price of 770. Morgan Stanley believes that uh, the EPS estimate is not at risk. They maintain a target of 880. And, and Credit Suisse has maintained an outperform. They believe that 14 times uh, FY20 uh, PE multiple is, is reasonable, and they have a uh, target of close to 925. So pretty much on, on, on expected lines, and most of the brokerage seems to be holding on to the V1 Tech Mahindra. Okay, so that's the view that we are getting on Tech M. Uh, by the way, maybe it's the long weekend factor. Or maybe it's the note that Motilal has put out. But I was just checking Nigel. I mean, all the hotel stocks, you name it, Taj, GVK, Kamath Hotels, Indian hotels on which Motilal actually wrote, or even EIH for that matter, all of these stocks are in positive territory. Well, uh, perhaps it really stems from the fact that Motilal is showing optimism. They've initiated on Indian hotels with a buy. Mangalam has all the details on this one. Motiral Oswal says that check-in right now as far as Indian hotels is concerned, they say buy with a target price of 163 rupees because the dynamics of the hotel industry are changing for the better. Demand is likely to outgrow supply and Indian hotels being the second largest hotel company in India, 17,145 rooms, 85% of them in the domestic market is one of the companies which will benefit from that. The occupancy level in the industry right now is 67% which is uh, uh, on the higher side and this this means that once the occupancies go higher, there is pricing power which comes in for the industry. And remember, hotels as a business has a higher component of fixed costs. So higher pricing power would mean a higher growth on their EBITDA. Indian Hotels is the company that they are sanguine on, a price target of uh, 163 rupees. They believe the operating profits can grow, compound at 25% over the next three years. But uh, on the back of favorable dynamics for the industry, all the other hotel stocks are buzzing around too. All right, Manglam, thanks so much for that. Well, uh, Ekta joins us to tell us about DHFL. Ekta. Well, uh, most of the details with regards to the PNL for Divan Housing were already known yesterday itself when the numbers came out. Uh, you know, f the fact that the AUM growth was steady, the asset quality was maintained. But the investor presentation details is what the stock is reacting to today. Uh, so, for example, the company did mention in the investor presentation that they've successfully repaid around 13,900. 27 crores 
of liabilities from 24th September to 16th November. This includes CP paper of uh, 9,215 odd crores and uh, the company has managed to mobilize fre fresh funds to the tune of 11,637 crores from 24th September to 16th November and the company says there is no asset liability mismatch in the short and medium term buckets that is basically under five years. Separately, uh, the company has also spoken about sell down of retail loans and a strategy where the company is aiming to become a retail focused entity and hence bring down its project finance to 5% of its asset under, under management. Okay, all right, Ekta, thanks very much. That's DHFL getting volatile today. Stocks just about half a percent up now, so you can see that quick decline that's set in in the last 15, 20 minutes of trade. Well, let's get Nimesh back in uh, because telecom stocks have been under pressure since morning and that's because of a note that Kotak has put out. Kotak is essentially reminding the market that the benefit these companies were getting on the, inter uh, the uh, interconnect charges, uh, basically, which are calls that are generating from a network like Jio and terminating on Bharti's network or on Vodafone Ideas network, that tailwind is going to go away. Nimesh has more details on this. Nimesh? The entire uh, telecom space is under pressure. Bo all the three stocks, Bharti Infotel, Bharti Airtel, and Idea Vodafone, all three are under pressure in trade today. First on the Vodafone Idea analyst meet, uh, you know, it was largely in the line. So they've they've maintained the capex plan of 27,000 crores uh, via equity funding and tower sales. So that's that, that's something which is going to go on. They said they're going to generate enough cash. Uh, to fund uh, the capex for the next 12 to, uh, 10 to 12 quarters, including the interest, interest requirements. So that, that will be taken care of. Uh, the third part, which is interesting and which, which had an impact on Bath Infertile, was that they look to expedite the, uh, the synergies for, to FY21 from FY23. What this means is, and which is what Kotak has highlighted in the report as well, that the net, network rationalizations is not over and they could potentially see further uh, you know, scaling down of 22,000 towers, uh, which is between the combined entities, both Idea Vodafone and Indus. Uh, what this means is this could be uh, this could have an impact of 6% on the top line, but but it could translate into 8 to 10% hit on the EBITDA margins and, and overall EBITDA as well, as well as a fair value for Bharti Infotil. That is the reason why the stock is down in trade today. And coming to both uh, uh, Bharti, Airtel and Vodafone idea, uh, Kotak wrote a note today morning and, and they actually you know did a, a comparison of uh, Relgio's uh, net interconnectivity cost vis-a-vis uh, -vis the gross co collections of, of both idea Vodafone and, and Bharti Airtel. And that shows a very striking difference, you know, uh, for, 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 for both Bharti and Vodafone, 30% of the combined EBITDA reported in Q2 came from the net interconnectivity charges and that is going to go to zero by FY 2020, which means, uh, you know, which, which Kotak has went on to say that for, this would mean that for Bharti, the EBITDA impact could be close to 10%, but for Idea Vodafone, the impact could be as high as 75%. So clearly that's that's going to be a big negative impact on both Bharti Airtel and Idea Vodafone going into 2020. But today the stocks are largely under pressure because of the fact that uh, on, for, for Bharti, uh, Infradel at least, uh, the fact that Vodafone wants to, uh, Vodafone Idea is looking at rationalization of towers, that would mean that there could be a hit of close to 10% on EBITDA for Bharti Infotel. Okay, thanks so much for that, uh, Namesh. And as, as uh, we have been seeing over the last few days and last couple of months, OMCs continue to be in focus. And in fact, today as well, they are in focus. They're under some pressure today. JB Morgan, in fact, has written a note. And Sonal's here with all those details. Sonal, over to you. Yes, oil prices have been the big talking point and this sharp fall that we saw in oil prices has definitely brought in some positivity for the OMCs. Today they are under quite, quite a bit of pressure but still, overall JP Morgan is quite positive on the OMC space and not only OMCs, it says that there is a potential upside for the companies like ONGC as well and they think that even on conservative assumptions, IOC, BPCL and ONGC do have some upside going forth. They think that markets can't, right now are factoring in the subsidy sharing burden for all these companies companies but they think right now the subsidy will be won only on something like an LPG. The kerosene under recoveries are expected to fall sharply given the recent price hikes that have been taken. So overall there is a positive stance that they have on these companies. They also do not agree with the bearish sentiment that is uh, there across the oil and uh, gas sector. So they think that going forward they see some upside for these companies. They also think that not in the refining segment but at least in the marketing segment there could be some inventory gains. The marketing margins they have come back to the normal 
normalized levels. So overall, the picture looks quite good. They have a target price of around 200 rupees on IOC, 440 on BPCL, and 250 on B, uh, ONGC. So the, uh, these OMC stocks have been trading at a valuation of around six to seven times. That is historically on the lower side. So they think that there is no reason why they should not be trading on those higher levels of around 10 times. So yes, a positive view coming in from JP Morgan. Okay, thanks so much for that. So now, well, here's a quick recap of all the buzzing stocks we have. We have Tech Mahindra, DHFL, hotel stocks like Indian Hotels, Taj, GVK, Kamath Hotels, Royal Orchid as well, and telecom stocks like Vodafone Idea, Bharti Infratel, Bharti Airtel, and finally, the all marketing companies, all of them trading.